the big decision that the Rams are going to have to make between the two quarterbacks, and you are squarely in the Carson Wentz camp. All right. Yes. We know that. So if you are the Eagles with the second pick, you're not even going to go quarterback. If Wentz is gone, you're not going quarterback. You're going in another direction. Yeah, I mean, you know, the assumption is Goff won, Wentz two, and that's I'd be shocked if it wasn't the case. Uh, you know, but if something shocking does develop, then you know uh, they could probably go a number of ways. I mean, the, the Eagles are a team that's kind of cleaning house, in my opinion. You see uh, Howie Roseman kind of trying to discard the Chip Kelly players very quickly, so um, they've turned over their roster and. You know, it's going to get interesting after the second pick there because, you know, whether it's Tunsil or Ramsey, it's going to have a trickle-down effect. And, you know, you throw the Cowboys in at four with, with the suspension with, with Demarcus Lawrence now. So it's going to be a lot of drama, a lot of trades. But I do, I do, I, I assume it's going to be Goff and Wentz. And I think the, the Eagles traded up to number two operating under the assumption that they're going to have Carson Wentz. And I don't think the Rams would trade up to the number one and not know who they're taking. And I, I think there's something to do with L.A., the move to L.A., get the Cal Golden Boy. I think there's a little PR, marketing, ticket sales involved. Not, not necessarily how I would operate, but I do think that plays a factor. So how do you – so the Eagles, you know, this week, you know, this week you know, says he wants it. If the if Eagles they don't put a quarterback, what position does that leave them in with Sam Bradford saying he wants to be traded? You know, it's funny. You know, Sam Bradford makes me laugh because all of a sudden he's unhappy. But I think it's everybody else that paid the big bucks to him that should be unhappy because he doesn't produce. And, you know, he, he did this little trick at the end of the season. He played, like, four good games at the end of the year and got Philadelphia to dole out all this money to him. And then, you know, the Eagles now trade up to take a quarterback, and his agent says, Sam Bradford wants a trade. We want to go play for a team uh, that, that believes in us long term. Well, if that's the case, then why did you sign a two-year contract? So, you know, to me, this is, this is the beginning of a disgruntled marriage. We see one uh, in San Francisco, too, with Colin Kaepernick, and, who knows, maybe they swap quarterbacks, but uh, I find it hard to believe that there's any team out there willing to pay that kind of money, I think $25 million guaranteed. I just don't think there's a team out there. You heard the Denver Broncos were sniffing around, but the price was too high. I just I can't envision myself a team taking on that contract. So how do you so how do you how do you impact the Eagles? How does it impact the Eagles? No, veteran quarterbacks, like just in the league. Veteran. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's like a merry-go-round right now. And I think that, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick cost himself a lot of money. I think he's going to find out he left money on the table because, you know, hey, the Jets are willing to pay him more right now than anybody else, $7 million a year. He's turning that down. After the draft, your value is going to be down because chances are the Jets or the Bills or the Broncos or maybe all three of them, are going to have added a quarterback in the draft. And then guess what? Well, Ryan, we don't need you so much after all. And then, you know, you take a look at Colin Kaepernick. He might be available for trade. I think that trade is really going to reignite come the, the draft. I think John Elway will be on the phone wheeling and dealing. And, you know, Colin Kaepernick has a decision to make. Does he want to take that pay cut from $12 million down to $7 million and play for the defending Super Bowl champions? Or does he want to be unhappy in an environment where he's going to earn $12 million? If it was me, I'd bet on myself. I'd say, send me to Denver. I'll take the $7 million this year. Let me show you how I get down. We'll go win the Super Bowl again. And then you get paid. But, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see how it all shakes down, the breakdown. I hear the Browns were higher on Paxton Lynch than they were Jared Goff. So that they could be in the mix there. You know, San Francisco's a wild card because if they don't like Lynch, then they might trade back and, and the Jets and the Bills might move up ahead of the Browns uh, for Paxton Lynch. So it's going to be really uh, – it's going to be one of the more wild drafts, especially with the trades and the quarterbacks moving and a lot of question marks there. 
You know, Rick, you, you know, didn't bring uh, Paxton Lynch in the quarterback conversation Rick, last week. Uh, what are your thoughts on him, him and his long term potential? It's 6'7. Six, six, seven. He's six, a big kid. Yeah, I think that's the word potential. And, you know, if you're asking him to step in from day one, I'm not feeling so confident about that. But uh, you talk about Denver, I mean, that's a great, great place for him to develop. And, you know, Mark Sanchez isn't the ideal starting quarterback, but maybe you sit him behind Sanchez for a year or maybe eight games. I remember the Giants took Eli Manning when they had Kurt Warner. Warner, Warner started the first eight games. Maybe Lynch progresses where he can start sooner rather than later. But I see a guy with you – know, I had a chance to sit in on the throwing sessions at the Combine. Two of the guys I saw were Wentz and Lynch were in that group. And there was a uh, three consecutive throws where Lynch just – dropped it right in the bucket, 45, 50-yard bombs. I mean, the receiver didn't have to break stride or anything. It was right there. And when you talk about that kind of arm strength, it's rare. I mean, he's just flicking the wrist and boom, 50 yards, boom, in the bucket. Now, when you take a look at the, the short to intermediate passing game, there's some, there's some development that needs to be done there. Uh, a lot of people think, you know, he's a product of the system, but I'll tell you, man, the kid with this height, and the, the athleticism and the arm, I mean, he has all the tools that you look for. I just think it needs to be developed a little bit more where, you know, Goff and Wentz, I think, are more ready to step in day one, start from the gate. I think Lynch might need at least a year of seasoning. I'm going to jump in with one, one other question before Macy steals the show. i got to get an Ohio State question in before she just uh, cuts me off and doesn't let me go from there. Hey, it's, it's justified. Just like Christian Hackenberg last week, justified. Right. We have Ohio State possibly dominating this first round. And the only reason I bring up, uh, Rick, the, regardless of what look she gives here, I'm a completely neutral college football and NFL analyst here. This is this is only because this is the storyline. Okay, Ezekiel Elliott going as high as four, a running back at number four. Do, do you see this happening? I see some projections going down this road with the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I actually had a conversation with a team that said Ezekiel Elliott is a guy that teams are going to trade into the top ten and try to get. So right now... You have Miami at 12 or 13, eyeing them. But from my understanding, it's the Falcons and the Redskins, the two teams looking to trade into the top 10 for Ezekiel Elliott. Now, number four, you know, to me, you kind of contradicted yourself in free agency. If you draft Ezekiel Elliott, why did you sign Alfred Morris? And, you know, Darren McFadden ran for 1,000 yards last year, and you have a whole bunch of other boatload needs. Aside from running back, you need a pass rusher. You need a backup quarterback. Probably need another playmaker, a wide receiver. Before I get to the running back need, and you know, I could probably gain a thousand yards behind that offensive line. Now, Ezekiel Elliott, he is a difference maker, so you know, I do see value in that. But considering they just signed Alfred Morris, I think the Cowboys have to bypass him just because of other needs. But I do think uh, we mentioned San Fran. If they're not high on on Lynch. That might be where the trade-up happens, where someone jumps in and, and grabs Ezekiel Elliott. Okay, we're going to let Macy shake the scowl off her face and ask some questions that are not Ohio State related, I'm sure. Actually, so to piggyback off of Ohio State, Ohio State's definitely going to be having a big draft party. Which other schools do you think will be kind of uh, celebrating you know, over the weekend? I mean, Alabama usually is really in the mix. I think Michigan State has some good players. Take a look, not just at Connor Cook. They got Aaron Burbridge. Uh, take a look at a guy like um, their their defensive lineman, uh, Shalil Calhoun. Yeah, Shalil Calhoun. He's a Jersey guy. Jack Conklin. And Conklin and Morris Thomas on that defensive line too, run stuff and defensive tackle. So uh, Michigan State has some players, and you take a look at what they've done there pro-style type of offense. They put some quarterbacks in the league, uh, Hoyer and, 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 and uh, Cousins. So who knows? Connor Cook, he's got more snaps, more reps, and more starts than any quarterback in this draft. And you know, Rick, uh, Ole Miss has that big three of uh, Robert Kimdichie, Laramie Tunsil, who's probably the second or third player drafted. Maybe he might slide if uh, the Cowboys really want to go running back, and Jalen Ramsey, being the athlete that he is, goes to the Chargers. But Laramie Tunsil, many think, is the best player at his position in the draft, period. And then, of course, uh, Laquan Treadwell, a wide receiver who the Giants are looking at among 
uh, some other teams as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point you make. You wonder, you, you look back and you say, why didn't they win more games, right? But, uh, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Tunsil is interesting because I'm hearing some teams actually have Ronnie Stanley rated a little bit higher. And, uh, you know, t Tunsil to me is like the Teflon Don. Nothing sticks to this guy. I mean, you go back to when uh, they recruited him with his brother. It was a package deal. People kind of tend to forget about that. Then he had the suspension, the domestic dispute. He gets brought up at the Combine. Uh, Ken Vice says, oh, by the way, Larry Tunsil was hanging out at the hotel room, too. And it's like none of this ever gets brought up. And uh, aside from that, on the field, I mean, I think a lot of people value uh, Ryan Stanley's passing ability, you know, pass blocking coverage ability a little bit more. So I think the, the, the knock on Stanley is you hear he's soft, and that's where Tunsil wins because he's just a tenacious guy. He's violent, he's, he's rough, he's a run mauler, so, and he looks, the, I mean, if you were to mold the prototypical left tackle, right, you would pop out Laramie Tunsil, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if Stanley goes ahead of Tunsil, and it's interesting because from everything I hear, the Chargers are in love with Jalen Ramsey, so if the, the quarterbacks go one and two, Ramsey goes three, Cowboys say they go Bosa and, and, and fill that need, and now Jacksonville, they're not necessarily in the market for a tackle, so he could actually fall all the way to the Ravens in their lap at number six.